Hello people, here I am uh, late at night editing another video just for you guys. Uh, so this video covers uh, removing the wiring harness from the 4AG motor. As always, if you like the video don't forget to give me that thumbs up and maybe subscribe to the channel. So let's start with this. Uh, and since the wiring harness is very, it's a complex uh, circuit uh, and I don't know the purpose of all the connectors. Uh, I will be what I will be doing is removing each connector one by one and then uh, labeling each uh, each uh, connector each wire end with some painter uh, tape and also labeling the, the place that the connector uh, connects to in the engine or in any other uh, circuit uh, so that I know which uh, connector goes into which place. Uh, so, when analyzing the wiring harness, you have to look for the parts that go inside the car. And I don't show the ECU here, but the ECU is the computer that controls the, the engine. That computer goes inside the car. It's near the passenger seat, uh, the, the place where the passenger uh, puts uh, his or her feet. So, this is the two, the three terminals that go into the ECU. There are also some more terminals. I believe this will be for the gauge cluster and other stuff. This wiring harness will go to the inside of the car. And I know that because you usually have this part here, this boot, somewhere halfway uh, on the wiring harness. And this will, uh, this will, um, be matched against the firewall so I know that this part uh, of the wiring harness will go inside the cabin and this part will be beyond the firewall on the engine side so that's always a good place to start so now we start removing the wiring harness notice as I am uh, tagging every single connector as I remove it uh, be careful removing any lines. If you see nodes on the lines, on the pipes, for example, small pipes. Some small pipes are vacuum pipes. Other pipes are fuel lines. And you have to be sure of which type you are doing. Usually you are removing. Usually the type of pipe is uh, shown on the pipe itself. Save all the, the connector holders, all the braces, but uh, discard the remains of the old pipes as you will have to replace them i am uh, replacing all the pipes with new ones some of these uh, come cut from the junkyard and it's a good idea to replace them with new pipes i continue to remove the wiring harness and tag every single connector uh, make a special note for the ground connectors as you can see i have removed some ground connectors by now connected to the gearbox because ground connectors are really important. You will have problems starting the car, for example, if you have bad ground connectors as well. And they can cause some really strange uh, behavior of the engine because everything is governed by electronics. If, the bad, if there is a bad connection with the grounds, uh, you will be in a really hard situation to trace back, to determine the position, uh, the situation uh, of the electronics or to troubleshoot the problem of the engine. Now I am removing the uh, connectors for the injectors because this is part of the, um, of the wiring harness. Um, be careful removing this not to break any connectors. Now I'm removing the, um, the top plastic covers and also we move on to moving the in removing the intake plenum because there is a, a big part of the wiring harness that's underneath in a, a plastic brace, underneath a plastic brace. So uh, you have to remove the intake plenum, which is this big uh, box, as you can see. I am removing it and exposing the uh, trumpets, the stock, uh, the OEM trumpets that come with the 4G uh, black top. You see, I am removing that wiring harness that comes over the, the covers uh, for the timing belt. And now I am removing the trumpets themselves. 
uh, be careful work, work slowly on these because they have uh, gaskets and you want to preserve them so I remove every uh, each trumpet uh, slowly they have a couple of bolts one on the top and one on the bottom after you remove all the trumpets you will be able to remove the holding plate I had to remove all those parts the intake plenum the uh, throttle body trumpets and the back side of the air box as you can see to gain access to this area with uh, some more cables that we have to loosen and to remove these bolts to remove this um, plastic uh, holding area this plastic support uh, and hopefully the whole cable uh, the whole wiring harness will come out now we continue with the disassembly of the wiring harness and there will be a final uh, plug that you can see it connects to the engine block don't forget to remove this plug before pulling out the wiring harness keep tagging everything like I have already said and eventually you will be successful and you will be able to remove wiring harness complete without damaging any plugs or uh, damaging any wires Now we move on to the removal of the gearbox to check out the status uh, situation of the clutch. There are two more bolts on the underside that you have to remove. This one will ho also hold the starter motor. And then there is another bolt that holds the uh, gearbox to the engine block. Remove this one. Then there is... I believe this one here also has to be removed. That one there. You can hear, you can see 0, 07, 12, 16. So this clutch was manufactured in uh, uh, 2007. It's a uh, an Isin uh, clutch, so it's a. Uh, if it was replaced, it was replaced by an OEM compatible uh, part. There's still some material left on the clutch discs. Uh, yes, quite a lot of material. Yeah. So maybe I'll take a look at this, but the press press is showing some signals of uh, signs of wear. So this clutch will probably be noisy because of this release bearing. You can hear it. It should be inaudible. And the the markings on the on this press show that the press is showing some wear. So I believe I'll be it's best to replace the clutch because it's such a pain to replace the clutch once this is in the car. So I'll take the opportunity to replace it now. Like in many situations, uh, you can just go to Toyota and buy the clutch kit that they sell, or you can look for the OEM that manufactures the clutch kits for Toyota. In this case, it's Aizin. It's the company that makes the clutches for Toyota. If you want that OEM result without having to pay OEM uh, price, having to buy Toyota parts, you can just buy the Aizin kit. Uh, this kit is for, for uh, uh, Toyota Avensis, it may not seem like the right kit, but uh, it's made of three parts. It has the clutch plate, the clutch disc and the clutch release bearing. These three parts uh, have been cross-checked by me using the, the diagrams and the part numbers available online, like for example japancars.ru, they have a lot of uh, interesting diagrams that you can find you can consult to find the exact uh, parts for your car and I have cross-checked all three parts uh, according to the iZine catalog 
as well as the Toyota catalog. So I found this kit which contains all three parts uh, matched from the uh, exact uh, part numbers. I have also checked that the part number, for the, that the clutch disc fits the splines and the, the plate is the same as the one I have showed in this video as well. Uh, the clutch release bearing is also uh, the same. 